Here we are again. Let me recap what we did in the previous episodes. We managed to open the details of the message with a springy animation and we got our component to be able to slide. We can slide it just a bit and it snaps back or we can slide it all the way to the right and it stays there. So now we'd like to remove it. We need to decide on what kind of animation to do to remove it. We could make it like shoot out on to the right we could change the opacity down to zero so it disappears or we could have a ninja come and slash it up with a samurai knife let's go for the middle ground with the opacity the way we're we're gonna use the animated api from react native for this and the way it works is animation is bound to to a variable and while while this variable changes some kind of element styles component styles also change. In our case, it's gonna be the opacity. So when the animation starts, our animation variable is gonna be one and the opacity is gonna be one. And when the animation ends, the variable is gonna be have the value of zero and the opacity also should have a value of zero. The great thing about this is because the animation is tied up, bound to the variable, then we'll, we will be able to, the React Native will automatically interpolate all the values in between. So let's see how it's implemented. First, in our state, uh, we're gonna do add the variable. Let's call it animated remove. And this is gonna be an animated value. And as I said, it's gonna start with one. Because we want now we're gonna tie it to opacity, so it's it's easy to know that like a variable is one, opacity is one. So at, at the start we have opacity one. So we set the value to one as well. So that's one thing. The second thing is when should we adjust it? In our case, we do it on panresponder release. So if delta is lower than, than 100, we can just return this. And in other case, we can do an animate timing. We have to specify which variable is it connected to. So it's gonna be our animated remove and it has some options. In our case, this means we're using the animated API Timing uh, defines the kind of interpol, like how the values are gonna be interpolated. Uh, we can also use a spring here to get the different, the way that variable value translates from, from the beginning value to the end value. Uh, timing is just linear linear uh, change, so let's, let's stick with that. Yeah, and as I said, the animation is bound to animated variables, so this, we specify which variable to use. So we set the duration, let's say it's like 750 milliseconds, and we have to set which value should this variable animate to. Uh, and we start with one, so let's end with zero, also because our we want to translate opacity from one from one to zero, so conceptually it's easier to, to understand it. Okay, so now when we drag it to the right, when we drag the message to the right, and anima animation is gonna start, but, so this variable is gonna change. However, we, we're not using it to, to show anything, so there's gonna be no visual change. So in our tra transform style, le let's add some change. So the opacity, We can just get the animate to remove uh, here, so we have a little bit cleaner code, and uh, we're gonna interpolate this value. And when we're inter interpolating, we have to define the input range, 
and the output range. Don't let me type it up. Yes. Okay. And we're cannot call class as a function. It's obviously uh, because we forgot to call new on it. The input range tells us about the possible values that the variable can take. So we know it can take the values from 0 to 1. The output range tells us about what kind of values the opacity is going to take. In our case, it's if variable, the input variable, the animated variable is 0, the opacity should be 0, and if it's 1, it should be 1. The reason we have it is like this is because we start with 1 and then opacity, then the element should be visible and then we translate to 0 and then it should disappear. So it's, it's fairly easy to, to comprehend. So uh, let's see if it works. And no, it does not. The reason um, our MLN doesn't disappear is that because we defined the, the animation, but we never started it. So now, oh, sorry. So now when I scroll it to the right, well, after reloading. So now when I scroll it to the right, it will disappear. However, we can see that the, the element is not visible anymore, but the parent list still thinks it's there. Like it's still, basically this element still exists in the list. It's just not visible. So what we can do is we should remove it from the list. We should do it. We should do it when the animation finishes. So fortunately, it's very easy to do. When we start an application, we can provide a callback which is a function to run when the animation finishes. So in our case, I will, it's fairly easy to remove this element because I prepared some helper method for it. And we can do it like uh, that. Handle the move of a bug. Bug is just a terrible name for a message. This application, uh, you know, naming is a, very difficult problem in computer science. So let's try this again. I scroll it all the way, slide all the way to the right, and a message disappeared. But however, like we see, the message disappeared, the message below moved, moved higher in the list, but the opacity here is still zero. Like the new element is not visible. It is because the list is powered by a list view and it's reusing the views so what we need to do is after removing the component we need to reset the opacity back to the starting value and in our case it should be both the opacity and the slide offset so it's very easy to do uh, we just set state and we set the slide offset to zero and the animated remove we create a new animated value, uh, which is one, because this is the starting value that we use. We could also do call animated remove dot set value one, uh, but we're if we're already doing set state anyway, we can just as well create a new one. So let's see how that works. And I think it works pretty nice. Okay. So to sum up what we did here is we created an animation that will toggle the opacity of a component from one when it's visible down to zero when it disappears. And we connected it to an animated variable and we use it to, to trigger the, the opacity change when the element is a slice to the right. This is a simple way of showing the pattern how animations work. We have one, one variable, a simple change of opacity, but using this API and combining different kind of animations together, we can get really interesting effects. I would like you to show one of them in, in our next video. So keep watching and see you soon.